Live from Darth Easy Studios in Eddieville, Kentucky, it's time for another episode of Darth Easy's Evolution and Survival Strategy. Tonight, we're talking about San Juan Del Sur, the second Blood Birds of the Largest. Big Titans of the game gets taken out, and a surprisingly one of the probably best finishes to a Survivor season I've ever seen. Your host, Darth Easy. Hello, Easy Nation. Welcome to another episode of Darth Easy's Evolution of Survivor. I am tackling Survivor Season 29, San Juan del Sur, otherwise known as Blood vs. Water 2. So, this was a season I was... I was not looking forward to rewatching, and I was, I was, be honest with you, I was very surprised of how much I actually enjoyed it, because, you know what, when I watched the season the first time, and my main reason why I hate watching the first time was because, um, because, the reason why I hate watching it the first time was mostly due to the fact of, of, I was subscribed to the Facebook page of Survivor, and they posted like a day later because you know I, I was in college at the time, and they posted who got voted out the like like hours after the or even the next day. So I don't I didn't always watch the episodes when they came out, and so when I saw I, I saw the spoilers and I was like I don't want to watch Survivor if I don't know what when you watch it the first time I like to be surprised and like to be a little shocked and it completely gave the ending away of the season for some of the big votes and I was like I'm not I'm not finishing this season but you know I went back and I rewatched it for my rewatch of you know the evolution of survivor strategy and cuz you know I've been watching these seasons uh for almost for it hasn't been a year yet but it's almost been a year and so yeah, I mean it's been a it's been a it's been a fun rewatch, and I thought Samuel Del Sur actually did a good job. So all right, so let's get right and talk about this season. So this season we bring big back, we bring back. Well, we don't bring back. It's we're bringing back the theme of blood versus water. You know, blood versus water. We saw it a few seasons ago when you know Tyson won. You know, you can listen to that podcast me talk about that season. I really like blood versus water. I thought the concept of blood versus water brought in a very interesting dynamic where you're you're facing these players who have played before and then you're also dealing with their loved ones and so they decided to do blood versus water again but this time we're doing it all rookies and i'll be honest with you most of the cast isn't memorable to be honest with you um i the so let's talk about the little bit of the pre-merge. Then the pre-merge. I thought the pre-merge was a little fun. It was fun watching John Rocker. He was trying to. He he was. It, it reminded me a lot of the original Blood vs. Water season when you had Brad Culpepper who was kind of running that tribe, and people were turning on him. Didn't like. Didn't like uh, Culpepper. It reminded me a lot of of John Rocker because John Rocker was you know he wasn't really leading anything. He was kind of. He was kind of the head of the vote, and he kind of gets himself in a little trouble when he told Jeremy that, yeah, I tried to take care of Val, but she didn't. She would refuse to uh, listen to me or anything. And it's Jeremy can only only has one side. All he knows is you let my wife down. I'm voting you out. Um. So yeah, John Rocker he, he gets voted out with an idol in his pocket. Sad to see him go because I thought it had been interesting to see him get mixed in with the tribe with some more people okay so eventually uh also and then we have drew like one of the biggest idiots i've probably ever seen probably since like survivor like thailand or yeah probably since survivor thailand who said let's throw the challenge this is gonna be a boss movie he's gonna show that i'm the godfather or the puppet master and everything and guess what happens he gets voted out that's why you don't throw challenges man um, then we, then we, we mix the tribes up. Blood's gone mixed with water. We have one tribe where it's all full of loved ones, and you have Keith, uh, in there as well. And then you have a tribe that's full of non-loved ones, and then you, and then, forget what the couple, and then you have Josh and Reed on that tribe. And Jeremy was in a little bit of a trouble. I have to say, Jeremy was so fun to watch this season. I'll get back to him in a minute. Um, and, you know, in this the one tribe, the Kyope, the Kyope tribe, just they just cannot find a way to win these challenges. They lose both challenges and gets rid of Kelly Wentworth and Dale. And you know, it was sad seeing Kelly Wentworth because I know what Kelly Wentworth did in Survivor Cambodia. 
in Survivor Second Chances going through this watch. So watching her the first time, she's playing a little more shy. She's playing a little more timid. And I can understand why she played the way she did in Survivor Second Chances because she got blindsided. She didn't know she was going home. I figured she thought Dale would go home. And Dale did really hurt her game. So playing with your loved one can hurt you at times. So, you know, Kelly gets voted out. I'll talk more about her in, in like two episodes because she is the star of that uh, season. So, okay, so now we're, we're, Dale gets voted out, then we get to the merge. And the thing with this, when we get to the merge, we have two power players that are vying for who's going to control the game, and whoever wins the battle between the two is probably going to win this game. We have Josh and Jeremy. I like both of these guys. And, uh, Jeremy, just like, I don't trust Josh, uh, he's trying to run things, Josh is like, I don't like Jeremy, so the two are going against each other, it kind of, it reminds me a lot of like, you know, heroes versus villains, when you have Raw versus Rubble, only one is going to remain king, and Jeremy wins, but he doesn't win for long, because then we have John, John and Jacqueline, the power couple who are kind of, they were in the middle of multiple votes, vote alliances john has such a good heartfelt story would love to see him play again i have to say but that moment in the episodes whenever whenever they take out jeremy it's you're just like holy crap when he takes out jeremy that's one of the part of the season i was not liking it with my first time because i was i like josh and i like jeremy i didn't much care for the rest of the cast but then you know this time around i'm watching with you know more fresh views and everything and Natalie's story reminds me of a lot of Sandra's story from Survivor Pearl Islands. You know, in Survivor Pearl Islands, Sandra's closest ally, Rufer, gets voted out at the final eight. And then she eventually says, like, I'm going to I'm gonna get my vengeance for Rufer eventually. And that's what that's what Natalie does. Natalie doesn't go into a hot fizzle. She's like she's like, Okay, you take out Jeremy? Okay, fine. Um and then she she makes John feel comfortable, eases him into his into uh, a a false sense of security. She even tells John, "Play your beauty idol. You're going home if you don't play your idol." I mean, the, and then also the classic moment, like one of the classic moments of this season. And it's also the moment of Keith Dale, where Reed has his big power move to take out the majority alliance to take out John, and uh, he tells Keith, "He's like, okay, you're going. You two are going to vote for." Me and Alec are going to vote for John. You two are going to, I'm going to convince the girls and uh, John to split the votes. And you're just like, okay, okay. This is, this is, this is getting interesting. And then, uh, Keith, uh, uh, Reed, you know, he's playing it up. He's making the, the one side feel good. And he says, he said, yeah, I say stick to the plan. And you're just like, oh, <laughs> that's amazing. And it just shows like, like Jeremy explains it at the reunion show where you have some people who are great strategists and are always talking about the game and then you have Keith Dale who doesn't know how to play Survivor. Like he's a likable character. I love Keith Dale. Like I'm not the biggest Keith Dale fan, but watching the season, I turn into a Keith Dale fan because he was fun to watch and he's hilarious at times and the whole stick to the plan is like one of the funniest things ever. So uh, eventually Reed gets taken out, and, like, the moment, the, there were some great fights, because I love it when they fight. Like, not fist fight, but when they get into these big arguments, because we don't see that a lot in Survivor, uh, in, like, some seasons, but some seasons, it is fun to watch Castaway just fight in Tribal Council, or fight whenever he, she calls Baylor a brat, and I hate Missy. I just, like, that's one person I remember watching this for my first time. I was like, I don't like her. And then as my rewatch of her, uh, I still don't like her. So some things are always remain true. And I just, like, I just don't like Missy. And even when she breaks her, when she breaks her foot or breaks her leg, I'm, I was like, no, I still don't like Missy. <laughs> and I kind of, I like Baylor because I thought Baylor and Natalie were playing a very good game together. And, um, Natalie, you know, she, but, you know, the thing with her and John, she's like, I'm gonna make it feel comfortable, gotta make it feel comfortable. She take she, Natalie's first big move is when she takes out Alec, because she knows Alec is gonna be more on the John vote, John side. If she takes out Keith, if she takes out Alec now, she has a loyal number with Keith, a, a number that she can completely manipulate and control. Then you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have John like, what the hell? And then, 
she's just like, oh, oh man, I thought I was supposed to vote for Alec. Oh, my bad, guys, right? Wink! <laughs> and you're just like, oh, okay. And then, it's just, it's, just a, it's just a great moment whenever they blindside John, gets rid of John. And then we hit to the final five, and Keith wins that final five immunity. And Keith and, or Keith, Baylor, and Missy all vote for Jacqueline. And Natalie tells Jacqueline, if you vote the way I tell you the vote, I will take you further in this game. And I will protect you. And, uh, like, uh, whenever Natalie goes up to play her idol, and she looks at Jacqueline and says, she says, like, I was going to play this for myself, but it's more fun playing it for somebody. And then she looks at Jacqueline saying, did you vote for who I said you voted for? And she said, I did. And she said, I'm playing this for Jacqueline. Jacqueline had three votes against her. The f- this is like the, I think the, at the time, or I don't know if it still is or not, but it's the latest an idol's ever been played and been played successfully. Because for, you know, when idol to play successfully, it means that the idol, you were going home. If you did not play this idol, you were going home. And Jacqueline plays the, or Natalie plays the idol for Jacqueline and Jacqueline goes home. And Jacqueline stays, and they put their votes on Baylor because Baylor, uh, if we take out Missy, she has a broken, she's a broken foot. She can't compete anyways. So we might as well take out a strong competitor that's going to be able to get jury votes. Uh, I would prefer to see uh, Missy get voted out because, like I said, don't like her. But we also get the classic jury moment with Reed. I'll get to that in a minute. Then Natalie. Uh, Jacqueline wins that final four immunity, and then she has to convince Missy and Jacqueline to to keep to say, "Oh yeah, Keith's such a big uh, jury threat," and because I do think that Jacqueline probably would have probably won, because if Keith would have won that final, gosh, that would have been awful. <laughs> Let's just be honest with ourselves; that would have been horrible if Jacqueline had won that final uh, at the end of the game. Or, uh, Keith, or not Jacqueline, but Keith. If Keith had won, I mean, come on. That just been, it'd been like Fabio winning again. Um, so yeah, I mean, she does such a good job. I think Natalie is a very great Survivor winner. And she really brings it at the end. I mean, she comes into plays. She, you know, she was kind of the right-hand man of Jeremy. And when Jeremy gets taken out, she goes into high gear. And I think she probably is... One of the great ones. I mean, we saw what she did at Winners at War. And I'll talk about that when I get to the final chapter of this evolution of strategy. But I, this season is great. I mean, there are some great players in this season from Josh to Reed. And also the the final moment of the season when Reed gives the the, the uh, evil uh, the classic fairy tale stepmother of Missy. It's just such a great moment. And it's like... I think one of the great jury speeches of all time. Like, like Sue Hawks is the rat and snake speech is only this. That's the only speech better that I can think of. Cause you know, we don't see jury speeches anymore. It's all, it's more of the open forum. I miss the old jury speeches cause it's, it's been fun watching them destroy these people. So overall, great fun season. Not my favorite season. And it, it's like, it's like, it's not, I want to say it's like, the ending of the season's good. I think the pre-merge is actually kind of fun. After Jeremy and Josh get voted out, I think it's a little weak. But overall, I think it's a fun season, and I would definitely watch it again. So, guys, that ends this episode of the Evolution of Strategy. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Guys, click that like button, subscribe to see more, and tell your friends about Easy Nation. Until next time, all too easy. <laughs> <laughs>